Hi folks, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Boolean operations of union, difference, and intersect. Um, in SketchUp, they're right here. We've got this one right here that says outer shell, which I think of as a union. Um, you have also this, this actual one that's called union, where you can still have uh, voids kept in the inside. But they both of these add two solids together. Then we have subtract, which we take one solid away from the other. And this one is trim, where we cut one solid down to the other. And this one is intersect. So the classic ones that I, that I usually think of are something like union, subtract, and intersect. But you can see that SketchUp gives you a couple of extras. But all of these are logical operations that are formed with solids. So let me just show you real quick how these work. Um, and then we're going to make a teacup. So to make any of these work, we need a solid object. So this is not a solid object yet, even though it has all the properties of it. In SketchUp, I have to triple click it and right click and make it a group or a component. Now it's a solid object. If I go to my solid inspector, you can see it says, your new, your good news, your, your model is a solid. So I need these types of objects that are overlapping in order to use those tools. So I'll make one that's a circle and I'll turn the circle into a cylinder and I will triple click it and I will make it a group. So now if I run my inspector here, that's a solid and that's a solid. So now let me just show you what these look like. So uh, if I use union and I say union this and union that, and then to finish the union, I have to click off. No, it does it automatically. That's right. So now nothing looks like it's changed, but if you're paying close attention, you do have a, uh, a box around the whole thing and there's an extra line right here. And if I were to look on the inside, you could tell that um, what what I managed to do, let's see if I can look on the inside here, is I got rid of the parts on the inside where they overlapped and made it into one 3D printable solid. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. There it is, I just did undo a couple of times. Let's try a different one, let's do subtract. Now subtract matters which one is one and which one is two. If I click on one for the box first, you can see I subtract that part from the cylinder, but if I start with the cylinder and then do the box, then I su subtract the cylinder from the box. So that's subtract, and then we have intersect. Intersect leaves where they both overlap. Okay, so this is a way you can take um, relatively simple shapes and make more complex shapes. We're gonna use this to make a teacup, okay? So we're gonna use some of our previous skills here um, to, to make the teacup. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this, and I'm gonna keep my box for now, because I actually wanna draw on the side of it my teacup shape. So I'm gonna use the arc tool to draw some of these teacup shapes. So the arc I'm gonna use, I like this two point arc, that's my favorite kind of arc. Um, I'm gonna draw a flat bottom first. Let me just draw that in with a straight line tool. And then I'm gonna to switch to my two point arc and draw the curved part of the cup. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to um, draw just half the cup. This is the center line of the cup. And I'm gonna use, I can use this uh, tangent at vertex to double click to make a smooth transition between those two curves. Maybe I like that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this part. I'm gonna give it a double click, but since this is a group, it's not gonna select that. Now I've got that and I'm gonna go under the push pull tool. I'm gonna grab my offset tool and, ooh, it won't let me offset the whole thing at once. It will not. Okay, so I was having a little trouble with the selection there, but now I got it. So I, I need to select all three of those, um, and then I'm going to offset them all at once. Um, you can see I have also drawn a, a rectangle around here and got rid of my box. Um, I want to create this thickness. Um, I need to have that fully enclosed, so I'm going to draw a line right there so that I can use this at, um, sketch right here. I'm going to get rid of these outside lines and I'm gonna revolve it like we did before. I'm gonna leave that line right there, just as a reference, so that when I draw my circle for my revolve, I'm gonna draw it right underneath that point. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom vertex, I'm just gonna draw a circle, and that will allow me to use the Follow Me tool. So I'm gonna pre-select the circle, then I'm gonna choose the Follow Me tool, and then I'm gonna click on the inside of my cup to revolve it. There we go, I like that a lot. So I know some of you struggled with that before, but if you did it correctly this time around and I triple click it and I make it a group and I go to my solid inspector, 
it should only have short edges warnings, and that's because of the curves. Okay, but it's a solid. It will do solid operations. All right, now I'm going to put in that handle. So to do the handle, I'm going to do a sweep. Um, and now I regret erasing some of those lines. Let's see if I can go back and have some of those lines back. I'm going to keep that line. Let's triple click this again and make this a group. Um, the reason I want that line is it'll help me with my handle. So I want a vertical plane for my handle. So I'm going to take my rectangle tool and I'm going to start it right here on that bottom of that line. That's why I kept it. I'm going to make sure I get that green reference so I can know I'm going up in space like that so that I know I can draw my handle on that. Okay, to draw my handle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the inside of the cup like this and make sure I'm on the face of this rectangle, not on the outside here. Click to start, and uh, click another point you want to be on that line, give it a little bit of a curve. So now there's my handle coming out and I can use my tangent reference now to shape my handle by double clicking. And double click. It doesn't like how many segments I've got there, huh? So if you get that warning that says there's too many segments, you can try again like that, or you can type as you're doing it a number and hit S, and that'll tell, tell it how many straight line segments to use. So there's my path that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the follow me tool on that. Um, but I need to have a shape that goes the other way. So, and I need to have that on that line so that I can sweep along that path. So I think I can get rid of this rectangle right now. I'm just going to erase these lines and these lines. And I think, let's see if I can get this shape to get drawn in the right plane. So what I want now is I want to draw a profile of my handle. So what do I want it to do? So you see how it's red like that? Um, that's what I want it. And I'm going to hold the shift key. And when I hold the shift key, it's going to keep it as a red circle. And what red means is that the center line of the circle goes along this red axis. So there we go. There's my circle. There's my path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my path by double clicking. And then I'm going to choose follow me. And then I'm going to click the circle to make my handle. Now this handle, you'll notice, has a problem. And the problem is that it's inside out. So I'm going to triple click it to select all the faces of the handle. Right click. I'm going to choose reverse faces. And then I'm going to right click again and choose make a group. So now I got a group there and a group there. Um, if you're paying attention, you'll know that there's a little tiny line on the inside that's not part of it, but we'll get rid of that in a minute. All right. So that was a little bit tricky, but here comes the Boolean operators because you can see my handle is not lined up right. So there's a number of ways to do this, um, but. Uh, one way to do it is I, I need to I need to cut this handle so that it fits on the outside. So I got my two groups. So here's what I'm going to recommend. I don't actually recommend the trim. I recommend a subtract. So first thing I would do is have nothing selected and then try a subtract and see which way I want to do my subtract. Do I want to do cup and then handle? And it's going to do some hard math here. And then I get that. Well, that looks pretty good. That looks like something I can work with. Okay. But there's a problem, and the problem is my cup is gone. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to make a copy of the cup first. So here's what you're going to do. Go to the Move tool. Select the cup. Move it straight back along the green axis. And tap the Control key as you're moving it to make a copy. And since it's moving back a certain amount, you can see down in the bottom right-hand corner, it says 166 millimeter, 0 0.04. I'm going to type in 200 and hit Enter. Because now I know to move it back, I'm going to move it 200 millimeters that way. So now I'll do my subtract. Subtract, and I think I, did I click on, I think I did cup minus handle to get that. Let's see what happens. Even though that's kind of backwards. Yep, that's what I wanted. So now you can see there's my line that I used to sweep. I'm going to erase that line. So the tricky part here is getting rid of this line that we used. Um, you can really carefully just erase it, but you're only erasing one segment here. Um, so if you want to erase the line on the inside, it can be a little harder to do. Uh, you can see things on the inside by putting up a uh, cross plane, a uh, section plane, excuse me, under the measurement tool here. There's this right here, section plane tool. And if I click on a face, it will put that section plane on that face. So you can see it'll cut along that face. 
And then if I click on the section plane and I choose the move tool, I can move the section plane over and see the insides of things. So there's nothing inside there. And if I looked inside there, you can see that there is something. There's that line that I, I want to get rid of. So if I double click the line, I can delete it. Um, and then to get the rest of your model back, you can click on the section plane. So it's selected in blue and then delete that. Now I think I've got this. I got to get rid of these two parts here, but I've got my part here that I like. So what I'm going to do is now I can explode my group. Once it's exploded, nothing is a component anymore. I can triple click this part and delete, triple click this part and delete, triple click this part and make it a group again. And let's just make sure that that's a solid. Yeah, it's a solid. It doesn't like all those short edges. But if I look on the inside in x-ray mode, there's nothing on the inside, nothing hidden. Um, but, you know, it doesn't like having these small curves, but that'll be okay, I promise. All right, so now I need to move my teacup back into place. So I'm going to move my teacup back into a place by uh, selecting it and choosing the move tool. And when I move it, I want to move it along that green axis again. And I'm going to type in 200. And now I'll be right back in place so that my, oops, so that my handle is attached exactly right. Except for it's not actually attached. So to actually attach it, I do need to use something like the outer shell group to get rid of that barrier in between them. I want if I want it to be a water type model and if I pour water into the handle I want it to go into the inside of the cup. So I think that'll do it. If I run my inspector it'll give me lots of short edges but that is all. So now I've got a finished teacup and I use my boolean operators to make it. And that's it today. Watch some of my other videos if you're interested in making more things in SketchUp. Or if you're interested in upgrading to something like SolidWorks, there's some great SolidWorks videos up there too.